If you've been keeping up with the Myers-Briggs indicator type trend, then you're probably familiar with introversion and extroversion. But sometimes personality tests, although they mean well and have helped with career building and personal development, they can still be, well, very black and white. In a perfect world, we'd only have to worry about two options. But sometimes people are more fluid than that, and things can get messy. What does it mean to be an introvert, extrovert, or ambivert? Sometimes the differences can be so subtle that we miss them, but your head doesn't have to spin any longer. We did the detective work so that you don't have to. Here are the key differences. Your ideal environment. A. Do you prefer your alone time and often feel overwhelmed in crowds? Or B. Do you feel stimulated going to new places and meeting new faces? These are the typical black and white options you're supposed to choose between. If you choose A confidently, then you're an introvert, and if you strongly identify with B, then you're an extrovert. Shyness, however, is a factor that can make these questions hard to answer. Let's be clear on one thing. Although introverts can be shy, do not mistake introversion and shyness as being the same. Shyness is caused by one's fear of social situations, which can be experienced whether you're an introvert or extrovert. But introversion alone is strongly characterized by one's desire to embrace solitude instead of feeling energized with groups of people. If you're a shy introvert, you'll feel nervous to interact with others at a party and start to feel drained quickly, wishing to leave early. But if you're a shy extrovert, you'll love seeing new faces, but you'll feel scared to talk to them. Ambiverts, on the other hand, love the best of both worlds. They enjoy both stimulating and non-stimulating environments. Psychiatrist Dr. Grant Brenner says that because ambiverts gain energy both alone and with others, both situations and environments can suit them. Flexibility is a key personality trait they possess, whereas introverts and extroverts have a stronger tendency towards one type of environment. Your thinking and communication style. Another key component to look at is how you think and communicate your thoughts with others. Do you often A. Think before you speak or B. Think as you speak? If you choose option A confidently, then you identify as an introvert. But if option B sounds like a no-brainer, then you're an extrovert. Introverts are very self-aware individuals, and reflecting on their experiences is important to them. This is why they usually prefer solitary activities like reading, writing, and other activities that help them learn about themselves. Introverts also prefer to observe others perform a task before jumping in. This is why they prefer to think before they speak, because it gives them time to process information before participating in a conversation. Extroverts, on the other hand, are often outspoken, enjoy bouncing ideas with others, and love talking about themselves, even the shy ones. This is why they thrive in social settings, like group projects, networking opportunities, and parties in general. As for our more reflective extroverts, they may also resort to writing to share their ideas. Unlike introverts who like to outline before writing their thoughts, extroverts prefer to write with little planning and find better clarity with what they're saying the further they write. Naturally impulsive, extroverts also enjoy the excitement of improvising on the spot, which is why they often develop a habit of thinking as they speak. Without frequent social opportunities, extroverts tend to grow bored quickly when they find themselves alone. Ambiverts make great communicators because they can adapt both introverted and extroverted tendencies. Psychologist Dr. Paulette Sherman says that ambiverts allow time for themselves to think before they speak, which helps them avoid saying something irrational or impulsive. Self-control is something they practice well, but note that they aren't afraid to speak their mind freely, too. Your level of decisiveness. Which one applies to you the most? A. Do you feel usually confident about what you need? Or B. Do you often hesitate, wondering if you should go out with friends or stay at home? Introverts and extroverts have a strong understanding of what they need. Whereas introverts often crave for solitude or some one-on-one -on -one time with close loved ones, extroverts need spice and variety, making multiple plans to hang out with different people. Ambiverts, however, often experience confusion. Since they can be both introverted and extroverted, sometimes they aren't sure what will energize them. When you choose the wrong setting, you might grow irritable or bored, wondering why you don't feel relaxed. In order to avoid burnout, one strategy ambiverts can adopt is learning how to say no. Overcommitting to plans can easily cause ambiverts to over-socialize when they need alone time. Other helpful tips include planning ahead to ensure that there is enough me time and allowing flexibility and frequent breaks to prevent yourself from feeling stressed or overwhelmed. 
Still wondering which one you are? To summarize everything, here is a chart we created that you can refer to. Whether you identify as a true blue introvert, an unmistakable extrovert, or an enigmatic ambivert, we hope this cleared things up. Remember, personality is often a difficult concept, but that's what makes it so interesting. The possibilities are endless and there's always something new to discover about yourself. Instead of growing frustrated, we encourage you to embrace the confusion as you embark on your self journey. Did you find this video helpful? Which traits do you identify with? Let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well for more helpful tips and share this video with others. Thanks for watching!